Please, for the love of the sweet goats present above and below, do not harass or abuse anyone brought up in this video. Don't make goat dad sad, don't bully people on the internet, and most importantly, don't be a numbnut. Hello my sweet goats, I'm your host Bunty King, and welcome to another episode of Internet Numbnuts. I don't know what about the internet does this, it just, it just creates the nuttier bunch of us. It's just, we're just nuts, together. We all end up connecting with one another, realize that there's things that we don't like about each other, and then we go nuts. And then we turn into numb nuts. And then you end up on this show. And that's not really the biggest failure. I mean, you could end up on a lot meaner shows where people say really, really bad shit about you. But, uh, but I mean, at this point, you're just gonna get me talking about what you just said and how silly I think it is. And I'll probably, you know, make a couple of jokes. I think. All right, I hope. But before I get into this episode, I wanted to draw your attention to my shitty Patreon page. It's kind of, I mean, Patreon itself isn't shitty. It's just shitty that I have to use it, okay? It's shitty that I have to, to stop the content for one second and be like, can you please give me some money can you please hook me up with a dollar a month it's just a dollar a month that's 12 bucks a year it's nothing it's absolutely nothing but it helps me a great deal it keeps me away from death it keeps it keeps me alive and it's the most it's the most beautiful thing ever plus you get perks of you know <laughs> i don't know uh, hanging out and uh, and watching movies with me at once a week at the very least you get that i would say that's a great return for a dollar a month huh yeah all right so now that that fucking cringe is out of the way let's get into some more cringe cringe that you found for me on the internet so i asked two places for submissions for this episode the first being twitter which uh thank god i'm back and the second being my discord community which is they've always been by my side even when i was booted off of twitter for the 600th time they were there they were still there and uh so i'm gonna read through those and then I'm gonna go and check out what Twitter had to say. So the first one is this dude here named Professor Cartoons. <laughs> and I think he has a photo. I don't know if they're he or she, whatever. Uh, they have a photo of Crash Bandicoot, so they're a Crash Bandicoot fan. They have this to say. They say, I fucking hate the military with the burning passion! Tell me to support the troops, but not the war is like telling me to support the rapist. Not the rape. Also, don't give me that they're just doing their job bullshit. They are adults who chose to be soldiers. Yeah, man, they chose to be soldiers so that you could go ahead and make dumb shit tweets like this. That's pretty much it, all right? If we didn't have a military, a branch of the military, other countries would butt fuck us, okay? I'm assuming that you're in the States. I'm not in the States myself, but I think the same logic applies for all the countries. Other countries would butt fuck other countries without a standing military. So yes, I do support the troops as much as I can, be it either by lending an ear to someone who's come back or by, you know, throwing a couple of dollars here and there whenever I do have the spare change. So maybe consider the fact that you're so, uh, quote unquote, privileged as a courtesy allowed to you by whatever government you have and whatever military that they have control of. Who's this guy? Uh, MLM Magnus? <clears throat> Cute little Pikachu drawing. A hot take, but a lesbian saying I hate men is different from a gay man saying I hate women because women are taught from day one that their worth is defined by being useful to a man. So hating men as a lesbian is a radical statement. <laughs> uh, whereas hating women as a man isn't. I don't, uh... I just, I just think that the word hate needs to just be eliminated from our daily vernacular. We're going around saying we hate this, hate that, and we're trying to figure out whether this form of hate is worse than the other form of hate. No, how about this for a radical fucking statement, okay? Hate sucks. I hate hate, huh? How about that? Hate is garbage. It's so stupid. It's twisting us up. We're getting all fucked up when you should be hanging out and having a great time and, and rejoicing over the fact that we're all here together. We're finally here at this point where all of humanity is connected through the internet. Isn't that fucking wild? And here's Danny O'Dwyer, okay? Good old, very privileged looking Danny O'Dwyer. He's pretty happy. He says, uh, the narrative that the games media is a clique of self-serving liberal-minded gatekeepers has always been bullshit. I wish they were liberal-minded gatekeepers, by the way, Danny. It would be quite fantastic, okay? Since considering liberal people tend to not try to get you fired from your job if you have an opinion that, that, uh, that uh, diverges from theirs. So once I eventually broke in, I found an industry full of folks with different opinions, creative and passionate people willing to argue their points loudly and proudly. I guess maybe you're saying this because you're in it and you got a lot of people who are nice to you and you're having a great time and honestly, I'm very happy for you, but uh, you look around, dude. There's a lot of left-leaning people in games media that want to get some, you know, right-leading people out of it. And uh, there's a lot of people who don't want to go ahead and talk about their politics specifically because they know that people within the industry are going to fucking take a massive shit on them and blacklist them from events. It's really, really garbage. Garbage. I, you know, ultimately I just think that you shouldn't really be talking about your politics in the video game industry. If you want to be a creative, I think that your politics inevitably come into play, but you're a journalist, fuck your politics, I don't give a fuck. I just want to know if you got good games and what's going on in the industry and, 
and all the cool shit that's happening. Yo, and this guy has been popping up quite a bit on my timeline. People seem to be like quote tweeting him a lot. I went and checked out his his follower account and he seems to have absolutely nothing. But people seem to be pretty obsessed with what this guy has to say. I don't give a shit. I really don't. He's just some fucking avatar on the internet. Julian C. Williams. I'm tired of dealing with mad nerds defending Daddy TB's bloated festering corpse when those same nerds would try to skull fuck Anita Sarkeesian's corpse on the camera and trade it on the dark web if they felt like it. Well, that's excessive. I don't know anybody that would ever do that, okay? I'm just saying, and I would not be hanging out with anyone that did that, okay? If you want to do that to Anita, man, you fuck off, okay? I don't want you around. That's fucking crazy, all right? Double so, since they're often limited triggered much, guys. Oh, God, man. This guy, uh, I've, every time I've seen him around, and the reason why I gave him that voice is because anytime I have read anything of him, that's been the voice that's come to my mind. This guy seems to really not like Total Biscuit. I think that anybody that goes out of their way to routinely point out that they don't like someone over and over again, over and over and over and over again, that means they probably got some shit they need to improve, all right? I don't spend a lot of time talking about all the people that I don't like, okay? I, I, and there's plenty of people I don't like. But you're never gonna really know about it until, you know, I don't know. I just don't I try to avoid it. I try to see the good in everybody. Even the people who fucked with me, I try to see the good in them. It's it's hard, but it happens. I don't know why this guy keeps being brought up. I don't care about what Julian C. Williams has to say. It's kind of stupid to talk about the guy after he's fucking dead. Because he's clearly not a problem for you anymore. Because he doesn't exist. Yeah? So why the fuck are you still talking about him? Huh? So uh, here's a... Uh, this is actually directly to me. This is from the Joker. Oh, fuck. The Joker's on my ass. Shit, I didn't know that that was an issue. Where the fuck's Batman? I need Batman. Batman. Joker's here. Uh, he says, you sound like a Sikh, bruh. But honestly, really Bunty King, what is the next religion you have on your list? Uh, I don't, uh, I don't know, dude. As far as I'm concerned, I, I was, I was raised Sikh, and when I went to high school, I was given a Christian education. So I would say that those are the two main religions that come into play in terms of shaping my morality. So I mean, that's where it ends. That's really where it ends. I'm not really super religious, so I'm not looking for a new religion, bro. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, uh, yo, did that answer your dumb fucking question? So this one here is from, uh, uh, Vice Munchies, and they, they say, they're going, they go, the thing about Vice is very interesting, is that they go from zero to a hundred real quick, okay? This is it. We should consider eating our own poop for a better future. How about you consider not wasting as much water? For a better future or how about you consider eating a little bit less and not throwing out the food that you haven't ate for a better future how about how about this how about you consider getting off the fucking internet and hang out with some people in real life for a better future so this is a really nice one actually this is uh from world news it says swedish student stops deportation of asylum seeker to afghanistan uh, ellen Irvsson uh refused to take a seat until an asylum seeker who was being deported to Afghanistan was removed from her flight. Uh, I mean, it's kind of kind of sweet that that person did that for that that asylum seeker. However, there's no guarantee that that asylum seeker didn't just get put onto the next flight out. And also, I mean, I just feel like getting getting I just it's kind of hard because you, you don't really know what that asylum seeker did in order to get deported. But then again, that asylum seeker wouldn't be put on a commercial flight if they were a threat to the public. So that's actually, it's not not really a bad, that's not a numb nut story. That's someone who feels passionately about their politics, you know, and, and, and got her way without really any violence or anything like that. Just through inconveniencing some people to... For a little bit. In fact, I just learned that this whole story has a lot more to it. And this this chick did quite a few things. And apparently other people stood up on the airplane. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the link for it in uh, the description below. Check it out. It seems it seems like a nice moment. I wouldn't say that this really is a numbnut moment. And look at this. We got someone who wants their name up on internet numbnut. So I'm going to put them up. It's Wu Flexes. Wu Flexes is a numbnut. Okay, and you know why he's a numbnut? It's because he's sending my own fucking tweet. What are you doing, you rat? Get out of here. Leave me alone. All right, leave me alone. I'm the one that collects the numbnuts. You don't give me any numbnuts of my own. I know what my numbnut moments are, okay? I don't need you woo flexes to tell me. This here's actually a funny one, and it's from uh, uh, Not So Fancy Dan. And he, this, okay, so this context here. The Mary Sue put out an article. They say, no, I don't want a Black Buffy reboot, and here's why. And so Racism Watchdog comes in. Everybody's the most, the, the most, the least favorite good boy on the internet, by the way. Uh, uh, and he just says, woof, all in caps. And then some guy comes along, his name's Not So Fancy Dan, and uh, he, he immediately says, I urge you to retract your woof. The writer makes good points that I don't really agree with, but it's not at all racist. I urge you to retract your woof. You're talking to the fucking, uh, the, uh, a dumbass, an internet dumbass that types in woof. The things that aren't really all that racist sometimes. It's really not that much of a, uh, uh, not b that big of a deal. It doesn't require retraction. It can bark at anything. Nobody gives a fuck. It's literally a dumb dog. <laughs> It's so stupid. What the fuck is this? Is this real? <laughs> so stupid. This is a pouring, popping, 
candy under my foreskin was the biggest mistake of my life. And it's got this picture of this dude. This guy put popping candy underneath his foreskin. That's so fucked up. <laughs> Look at his face. Oh, he's good. He's good. This guy is gold. This guy's fucking gold. Oh, we got a numbnut right here. It's Keemstar! And he says sex icon, and he's putting a photo of himself. He doesn't look that bad in the photo, but he's not a sex icon, trust me. Keemstar's not a sex icon. Let me tell you something, if Keemstar's a sex icon, I'm the Henry Cavill of YouTube. <laughs> what is this? What did Ricky send me? Who is this guy? <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> Yo, this is like, this is like if Anthony Fantano was like, Doing like, I don't know, instead of music reviews, he like reviewed like the latest play school toy or something like that. That's that's that would be his channel. This is like bizarro Anthony Fantano right here. Ooh boy. You got Logan Paul here. He says, Chloe just informed me that uh, the banana is in fact a berry. I guess you could say that's bananas. Ah shit, dude. Really, bro? Really? You gonna do that to me? You gonna fucking do that? You know that's not funny. You're such a rat. Oh my god, Ben Kuchera from Polygon. God damn, this guy's annoying. He says, I wrote a very long thing about the argument of but context is such utter, utter bullshit. And it's called PewDiePie and Trump aren't hurting the press, but they desperately want to. Ah, dude, why the fuck do you give a shit about PewDiePie so much? I mean, who gives a shit, bro? Who gives a shit, Ben? All right, he's just gonna keep doing his thing. There's nothing you can do to stop him from doing his thing. He's never gonna stop doing his thing. Okay, so you keep writing about this kind of shit and it's, it's just so dumb, dude. It really is very dumb. Stop it. Play some fucking video games. Do something. Do you want to play a game? What do you want to play? I'll play something co-op with you, okay? Hey, I heard the new fucking, uh, what's the name of that game? Overcooked 2 has online multiplayer. Let's play that together, okay? It'll get your mind off of things. Maybe you'll stop shitting your pants about PewDiePie. Maybe you'll stop shitting your pants about how everyone's trying to attack you because you keep attacking them first. So here's this guy named Joel Watson, and he says, Why can't I block accounts based on keywords in their profile? Fair. I mean, why not? You could do that. I guess that's a feature that they could add. Why can't I mass block based on any number of criteria? Okay, whatever. Why does this site coddle Nazis? Why do I choose to be on it? It hasn't been fun for coming up on two years. Dude, I think it's just because you are looking in the wrong places. I think that maybe you're very unhappy already. So you're looking for an outlet of some sort. You're looking for a battle to fight and uh, you're uh, really worried about Nazis. I don't think that you should be really worried about Nazis. I don't think they coddle Nazis. I mean, I, I mean, I've been banned from this fucking shit eight, like multiple times, and I'm not a Nazi. <laughs> they, I don't know. Who the, I don't know who the fuck they're, they're they're coddling, but they're definitely not coddling someone like me. I can tell you that much. Okay, the dicks that I had to suck to get my fucking Twitter account back, bro. But look, you can make it fun. I got a nice fun community, even when I talk about things that maybe slightly controversial. People are having a good time. That's the beautiful thing about this place. It's really what you make of it. It really is. So, Joel, you really want to make this experience a little bit more fun for you? Avoid being a numbnut. Just enjoy life. Killmonger's widow. Gorilla mama to you. She says, $40 an hour is not a lot of money. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? The fuck does that mean? It's an amazing amount of money. I would love to make $40. If YouTube guaranteed me $40 an hour for the rest of my life. <laughs> Just so I would be like, that's cool, that sounds good. They're like, guaranteed this. Sick. Sounds great. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? This one was fucking weird, man. This is from some dude named JDS, another fucking anime avatar, so honestly, don't put th that much weight into this. This isn't a global opinion, all right? Have you ever noticed how many gamers who loved Half-Life 2 ended up becoming Nazis just food for thought? I've never seen a game give us a strong handy as that one. I don't fucking know what- what the fuck? Half-Life 2 has everything to do with fighting against authority, so... Uh, I don't know how it would play into that, that uh, play into their identity that way. And uh, all the people I know that liked Half-Life didn't end up becoming Nazis. So what are you talking about? You know, I, I just don't, I just don't get it. That's really kind of a, a dumb statement to make. But hey, man, you're allowed to make it. So these next set of tweets are from Arturi. And he said, one of my favorite content creators said this a few weeks back. Can you decipher it? He shows me two tweets from Quentin Reviews. Uh, and I like this guy, by the way. Uh, but he says, centrist politics or why the era of reconstruction ended. In the moment, it's convenient to be centrist because you probably feel like there's nothing you can do about the situation. Why have a stance? But it's mainly just toxic and makes you look like an idiot to historians. And then he goes on and says, uh, I'm probably going to start uh, being more open about my heavily liberal and left-leaning beliefs because it seems to me that the don't talk politics rule is only applied to people on the left on this platform and uh, I don't know man I guess this uh, this does count as a numb not moment I really do believe that I'm sorry I'm sorry Quentin but centrists have a stance on things it's, they don't it doesn't mean they're smack down in the middle man it means that they're capable of seeing both sides of the aisle the reasonable sides of the aisle to kind of determine the right answer for themselves so it's not toxic it's just I, I think a very logical normal way of picking your politics 
Uh, and then you say uh, about about the whole thing about, you know, don't talk politics being a rule that only applies to people on the left of this platform. That's not true at all I, I, as well. I, I think that the don't politics rule is applied because anytime you talk politics, you get a lot of shit in your yard. People start flinging shit from everywhere. Some dogs come in and start taking shits in your fucking yard. Everyone, it's turned into shit time. That's all it is. So that's why I think people shouldn't talk politics. I mean, look at me, I'm talking politics, but like that's the general reason why. I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, make a bit of an assumption here. I'm gonna assume that most of the people that are heavily into politics on their YouTube channels aren't very happy. They're probably having a bad time because that's the kind of environment that politics builds. So if you want to maybe pepper in your politics, sure. Okay, that's fine. You can do that. If you're gonna be really heavy with your with your politics, I think that could cause problems for anyone on any side of the aisle. So now you got this dude, uh, Han Heen, and he says, if you support gay rights, you should support pedophiles too. If not, you are a hypocrite. No, no, you're not a hypocrite. With gay rights, it's about two people who want to enter a partnership, right? And they want to be married and stuff like that. People who are consenting to one another. Uh, with pedophilia, you can't attain that consent, all right? So, uh, no, it's not the same fucking thing at all. It really isn't. So you're not a hypocrite if you believe in gay rights and, uh, and, and not, not whatever the fuck that is. That's, no. No! <laughs> no! No! So that is it, my sweet goats. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed yourself. Once again, if you really do appreciate what I do, consider becoming a patron, okay? Uh, of course, go ahead and make sure to leave a like. Leave a like on the video. Share this with a friend. Hit that sub and make sure you hit the bell icon too because uh, then you won't get notified. If, uh, if you don't hit the bell icon, YouTube is going to be like, they don't want to watch this stuff. You want to watch my stuff, hit the bell icon. I will see you again in the near future. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.